Um, all right, I'd like to call the Board of Selectmen meeting to order for Tuesday, October 4th at 6.03 p.m. Could I have a roll call, please? You muted, Teresa. Still muted. There you go. Oh, there you go. Now you're not. I'm sorry. Teresa Amor is present. As Sexton Duranian present. And Veronica Kyle present. Well, please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, divisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, I'd like to announce that the meeting is being recorded and will be posted after the fact on um, the town YouTube channel. It is also live on channel nine. Uh, for chairman's addition and deletions, um, we are going to delete the minutes for April 13th, 2022. They will reappear at the next meeting. Um, we are also going to um, delete the section 4.3 town signage bylaw report. So um, um, that's all I have. I think everything else will be under the yes on reports for pretty much all of us. So um, those are our additions and deletions. No additions, just deletions. Um, does anybody have anything else? No. Yes. Madam Chair, I do not. And Eric? No? Okay. All right. Uh, with that, is there any um, public comment? I don't see any hands, so I'm going to assume a no. Uh, I think there's actually one. Steve's hand is up. Steve no, that's, oh, that's, that's... Oh, no. That's, Sorry. That was my, there was a hand there. Okay. No, I don't <laughs> see any little yellow hands, so... Okay, um, no public comment. I'm going to move on then to review and approve the meeting minutes for May 23rd, 2022, and for um, 531, 2022. And these were in the SharePoint in preliminaries. Um, so do we wanna do these one at a time or what would we like to do? I think it's easier to do them one at a time. Okay, then let's start with um, 523-2022. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve the meeting meeting minutes for 523-2022. I'll second that. Any discussion? Okay, with them. All right. Um, uh, all those in favor? Teresa A. Morris, yes. Sexton Duranian, yes. And Veronica Cal, yes. All right. And now for the um, 523. Minutes. 531. I'm sorry, 531. I make a motion that we approve the meeting minutes for 531 2022. A second. A second. All right. So 531. Um, any comments on that? I did not have any. Teresa, any comments? No, ma'am. All right. Well, um, then, uh, Teresa, how do you vote? Teresa A. Morris, yes. That's Sexton Iranian, yes. And Veronica Kelly. Right. So, those are from Canada. Um, appointments and hearings. Um, we have an, uh, an appointment. Our hearing is not until 6 30. So, we're going to um, keep going um, and then come back at 6 30. Harrison, is that all right? Yeah. All right. So, uh, is there a motion to appoint Lois Rierick to the West Townsend Reading Room Committee for a term expiring um, at the end of April 2025? I make a motion that we appoint Lois Rierick to the West Townsend Reading Room Committee for a term expiring April 2025. And I second that. All right. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Teresa, how do you vote? Teresa A. Morris, yes. A Sexton Duranian, yes. And Veronica Kelly, yes. Welcome, All right. Lois. Um, 
Moving on down to the appointments of officials and personnel. So just take a minute to get to that and share them. Um, we have three appointments. So uh, starting with the fire personnel, um, uh, is there a motion for to appoint Trevor Jones? I'll make a motion, motion that we appoint Trevor Jones per diem firefighter medic contingent on pre-appointment physical and quarry check. Second. Any further discussion? Teresa, how do you vote? Teresa A. Morris, yes. A Sexton Iranian, yes. And Veronica Cow, yes. Uh, the second fire um, appointment. I make a motion that we appoint Mark Patel uh, per diem firefighter medic contingent on pre appointment physical and quarry check. I'll second that. All right. Any further discussion? Um, Teresa, how do you vote? Teresa A. Morris, yes. A Sexton Iranian, yes. And Veronica Cow, yes. And then we have an appointment uh, for Alana Rizzuti um, as the counselor for Rec Kids. Is there a motion? I make an appointment oh. that we appoint a lot, lot Alana yes. Rizzuti as counselor for the Rec Kids uh, for the Rec Department. And that. Any further discussion? Uh, just uh, is this a pay position out of funds that the Rec Department made, or is this a paid to position out of? town you know um uh, expenditures that. It's, um, it's not part of the budget it's from receipts for those participating in the rec program okay All that's the a question i was trying to ask very poorly thank you Bye. madam chair um anything else from anyone all right so teresa how do you vote teresa a morris yes the Sexton Iranian, yes. And Veronica Cowan, yes. All right, so welcome Trevor Jones, Mark Patala, and Alana Rizzuti. Welcome, guys. All right, so um, community compact grant, are we ready to talk about that? Absolutely, Madam Chair. Would you like <laughs> to talk about that, Eric, or uh, Chaz, or maybe both of you? I don't know. I, yeah, I can do it. Uh, very briefly. So um, uh, just kind of a bit of a recap on the um, on the um, uh, budgeting um, best practices grant. The town did apply for the budgeting best practices grant, as we had discussed, for the ClearGov software. <clears throat> um, and that application was has been received by the state. And I've been in communication with the state about the application. They have not given us a result yet. Okay. on that application. Um, in the interim, uh, I did sign an agreement with ClearGov that allows us to to um, uh, to terminate it at no cost to the town if we don't get the grant uh, so we can start that they're willing to start at their own risk the uh, the uh, getting the documentation for the town and starting to put it into their system so that um, we can have the backup financials from previous years the bill. Right. Yeah, so they're they're willing to start the build at their own risk, and if we don't get the grant, we will uh, we will obviously have to terminate the the agreement. But they're willing to do that. They're very confident that that they yeah. will be able to get the grant. So that's where we stand with the uh, the ClearGov okay. process. And, and they upload all of that from prior public records, correct? Yes, it's the prior the prior, prior budgeting budget documents that were the uh, town meetings. Yes. Okay. Um. Um. Uh, the co community compact grant for the IT applications is due on Friday. We are working with Guardian um, to apply for a grant to um, uh, to uh, extend fiber from Town Hall to to several uh, to the, the various Building. town buildings. Um, the town buildings that we are including in the grant application are um, the library and senior center, the police station. Um, the fire station, the central firehouse here, um, the West Townsend reading room, um, cemetery department, the highway, the, uh, the highway department are the, the town buildings that are going to be included in that. It'll go to the rec fiber. building too. Yes. Um, next door to the rec building. I will. We can add that. I will add that to the, yeah, I think, I think it's on the same note, but yeah, we can add yeah, that. Yeah. I, 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 
Yeah, I don't know if there's fiber there already, but uh, but if there's not, but if there's not, I, I will I will call them. I think we I, are connected I, already. Okay, I'm not. Their, their IT. Yeah, okay. but I, we could double check that and make sure with, that the vendor can put that on. That's a very very short run compared to some of these other ones we're talking about. Right. Um, um, okay. And so that application is due on Friday, and we anticipate submitting it this day at that time. Do we need a motion to sign? I think that we, yes, a motion to 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 allow me to submit the that grant application. Okay, so is there a motion um, to uh, have Eric sign the grant application for the community compact IT grant? So moved. Second. Uh, any further discussion? All right, all those in favor, Teresa, have you vote? Um, Teresa A. Morris, yes. A sixth in the rainy and yes. And Veronica Kelly. All right. Um, anything more on that? No. I put the other one in because that was something that the efficiency and regionalization best practice grant um, planning board had mentioned something about that. Being interested in having the board of selectmen look at applying for that. I will take a look at that. Okay. Um, and that's a best practice, and I think we can apply for two best practice grants. And the funds are for best practices. The funds, if I'm remembering that, right, the funds are dispersed until they no longer exist, yes. until the state runs out of money. Right. However, for the IT, there's definite deadlines and yes. there's three lines. Yes. Right. Um, moving on to the public transportation task force update. Um, there was a document that I wrote after our last meeting. Um, Eric had suggested that we put the goals of the group or what we are trying to attain. So uh, you can see that there are our tasks are to determine what transportation is currently provided by LRTA and who, how is it used by whom, same for March. How is it used and by whom? Uh, what transportation is needed by all segments of the community currently and in the foreseeable future. So what do we have a need for? I know that Emily, um, our community outreach coordinator has some uh, thoughts on that um, yes. data. So, and how might these needs be met by LRTA, by Mark and by other means? And then from that, we can determine whether we're gonna contract Mark or not and for what services and how the LRTA piece works. Um, and so uh, we will need a selectman representative, the community outreach coordinator, the plan planning administrator is interested. I figured a council on aging rep that could either be a staff member from the senior center or it could be someone from the committee. So um, if, if we're good with this. And then one other, I thought it's just nice to have five instead of four, mm -hmm. although maybe it doesn't matter yeah for a working um, group right hopefully it, it wouldn't matter so maybe we should leave out the other piece of it and we've targeted uh, there was a question about how much time would be spent on this and i figured one meeting a month you know we assign tasks to everybody go off figure out what you need to know and bring it back so yeah. that's kind of how i looked at it with the goal of getting things implemented in march time frame I think that's reasonable. Can I add one thing to the, the, to list. the list if that's possible, yeah. which is um, prior to any implementation to um, to talk with the land use coordinator um, about um, um, MBTA communities implications, if any. Oh. Okay. Um, Mike and I were discussing the fact that changing the transportation in town is a good goal and we just need to know whether or not if doing that change is going to impact the mbta communities category that we're in and if it does what would that mean for our mba communities requirements mm -hmm. so our first thing for mbta communities is due in january it's january 23rd i don't know i'm kind of making that date up but i thought we had to um, not exactly that. Our, our MBTA community's action plan? Um, not the action plan itself. Maybe it is, yeah. The action plan. Yeah. It's already done. Mike's already submitted it. Oh, it's already submitted. Yep. Ah, glad to hear it. <laughs> so I, right. we just want to, I think before we do anything on the ground, I just want to make sure that we do an evaluation of whether or not 
that impacts her. I mean, it may not. We may ask the state and they may say, oh, no, you're locked into whatever you are right now. Even if all of a sudden we put a commuter rail line down the street, you're still going to be an adjacent small oh, yeah, I don't think we're doing that. So we don't want to change that <laughs> yeah, designation yeah, no, until no. it's locked in. So that's just something we right. need to evaluate. Okay. So, all right. So that was it. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to remove the other from the, so that so there will be four people in this yeah, pass through. Right. Um, and our first meeting target is November 10th, I think it is, day before Veterans Day. Um, that's a possibility for the first meeting. All right, so if everybody's good with this, I will um, talk to Karin and the Council on Aging. I think they might have a meeting this week. I think we do. Um, we can fire off something to them first thing in the morning. Okay. To Karen and just say we're putting this together and if they be a volunteer. All right. So I will edit this, add that line, cross out other, and um, all right. That's all I had, unless anybody else has anything else on this. No. All right. Are we six thirty yet? No. Uh, we skipped 4.3. We'll come back to that uh, at a later meeting. Um, town bylaw enforcement discussion. Well, this this came about because of the lighting bylaw. The lighting. And the public lighting um, bylaw, which is what, Chapter 95 or something like that, um, uh, doesn't have an enforcement path. So uh, I had met with Adam during office hours to look at that. And we went through, he went through, not so much me. Um, all of the bylaws, we were wondering if we needed like a catch-all so that all bylaws in town could be enforced. And most of the bylaws have something in them. If it's not listed in, what is it, chapter 1.1 or whatever, it, it is within the bylaw itself. It just so happens that this one got passed over. So what you have in the SharePoint is um, a potential article for town meeting to just um, have the um, enforcement be similar to what we did for um, unregistered motor vehicles, which was in the same category of lack of enforcement um, designation. So that's what, um, so it's there. Uh, that's a possible warrant article for special town meeting. And it just states that the building inspector, let me get to it, sorry, then, Say something. Um, the building inspector is the enforcement agent, and it it pretty much it's a non-criminal disposition, and it goes on through. With it's very it. standard. Kind of yeah, thing. very standard. Follows what we've done for other bylaws with non-criminal disposition. So uh, this will come back when we see uh, the special town meeting warrant. So this will be in there in some uh, manner. Uh, the other thing is a uh, suggestion that he made is that um, every however many years, 10 years, seven years, 10 years, I think, that um, a town should look at all the bylaws uh, as a whole and see if it still fits what we want. And given that we just um, approved a master plan in town, this might be a good time to do it. And he said, um, one thing that some towns do is all the boards just keep track of what they, you know, this is a zoning bylaw change. I mean, we're seeing some, I think uh, there's one coming up at our next meeting from the planning board that was probably discussed last night. Do we want to tackle these piecemeal or do we want to start a list of these are things that we want to see and then look at the um, bylaws as a whole so it's it's just food for thought we don't have to answer that today but um it's a suggestion so yeah he, spe he specifically was talking about the zoning bylaw i think being something that might need just to have a a refresh right because of different terminology different realities of the world now than there were when this was originally passed and things in there that just simply weren't contemplated mm -hmm. things in the world that there, there's no way we could have contemplated when the town originally passed that bylaw and mm -hmm. so doing a refresh at that would probably be a 
Um, good thought. And he said that a, a table is a good idea, but it has to match your existing bylaw. So um, in in verbiage, uh, you know. So anyway, um, uh, a lot of towns do table. Yeah. Um, but much more difference. Yeah. So it, it might be time to look in particular at zoning bylaw. Right, right. So that's something if we did, if we did rewrite the zoning bylaw, hopefully we would be able to do it with a consultant. Yes. And the consultant would be in charge of writing the table. It, it would be a perfect best practice grant um, possibility. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's what I think it would again. fit. So I'm so. more than happy approving. I don't know if I want to be doing this. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. The it's rewriting so is, a, is a, a big deal. You really do want to have it. Someone Somebody who does this profession. Right. And there's people who you can yeah. attack. Adam's old partner is one who does uh, rewrites about Ellis. Oh, really? Mark Dabrowski. Okay. He wrote a book on zoning in Massachusetts. He's like the guy who wrote the Massachusetts zoning bill. So he, oh, yeah, well, dropping so. names like that. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So um, it's something to think about, and and we are probably due. We went back and looked at the last overhaul, and it was like in the early 80s or some such thing. It was a long, 84, 85, yeah. long time That's ago. It's a long time ago. So um, where we've done piecemeal little bits here and there. And you can, there are some things that's good for lots of things. So sometimes, it's okay. like, constitutional law changes like signage you know that changed at some point in time and if you don't go back and rewrite your whole bylaw you're not going to be have to snuff with signage so it's well historically if we have had to or i shouldn't say we if the board or committee had to deal with a particular issue and saw you know a particular bylaw pro problematic yeah. then the next meeting they they they, they thrown work to fix it to, yeah some yeah. Right. To together right. um but i'd like to see that also with the um uh, for instance, the master plan committee with the, the planning board to make sure that they're doing, you know, one chapter each cycle as opposed to having them try to do all it at once. And I think that's what they're focusing on as well. Yeah. Um, we need to be much more proactive in, in keeping up with this as, as opposed to waiting 5, 10, 15 years and then have to rewrite all of it because it's just 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, how are we? we have five more minutes. So, are we ready to go on to 4.5, the shared speed spike lanes at the harbor? Um, all right. So, I put in um, for the uh, select board to see tomorrow. Um, we, the town, have about $30,000 left, $26,000, $27,000 uh, of funds left from um, the shared streets and spaces grant. And the Mass Dot has um, agreed that we can expend it by the end of well, mid, middle of June 2023. Mm -hmm. So um, the uh, idea is to provide accessibility from, in particular, Ash Street to the rail trail at you know at the harbor. So. Um, and one way to provide safety, in particular for kids who might be biking from that neighborhood to uh, the bike trail, is to put in bike lanes. It makes people aware. So we have a community meeting tomorrow night to roll out what we're thinking. Um, and a timeline with this is uh, that we, we've been working with Kittleson and Associates again. Uh, they are funded by the state through the Bar Foundation to provide planning assistance to towns like us who don't have town planners. And they're wonderful to work with, they really are. Um, and so they are the ones that have been doing the concept for us. Um, and let me see, where am I going with this? Uh, we're hoping to have to get input tomorrow, have uh, another pass of the plan that they sent out based on the input. Uh, by the end of October, we would like to go out for procurement. Um, and then 
get that back by December, early December. It takes what four to six weeks for procurement cycle, especially yeah. with the holiday in yeah, there. Yeah, thir thirty days. Right. Um, and uh, and then um, do the striping in the spring. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing to think about is there. I mean, we have a PFAS emergency in town, and therefore our have a treatment plant coming or in the works. Uh, the MEPA review for that was today, and I attended, and in that process, I learned that there's going to be a water main put in along South Harbor Road, Ash Street, South Harbor Road, South Street to um, uh, the Harbor Trace Plant. Right. And so the timing of the, uh, the construction of the plant will be in the spring of 2023 and the summer of 2020. Mm -hmm. So we have to look at the time and forgetting the right Yeah, we're going to have to, to get through there, yeah. And I need yeah. To, so I will talk to, to Dave at Water about the timeline for the paving, and hopefully we'll have an idea about that by the next time we have a meeting on the Sugar Street Shrubs. Yeah, so... Um, that's something I hadn't even thought about. So I saw that red water line going right along those two roads. And I thought, oh, yeah, we're putting bike lanes there. So the good news is um, we could have better conditioned roads yeah. when we put down those bike lanes, which right. is a positive. Yeah. So anyway, tomorrow night for people at home, uh, tomorrow night, and we're going to announce this again later at 7 p.m., there's a Zoom. It's up on the news section and hopefully on the events. There, there. Yeah. and um, you can get the Zoom link there. Mm -hmm. And uh, we um, are excited to roll it out for the town. So um, that's what this is. So I just put it in there so that um, the select board could see what what we have in mind. It involves painting an island kind of at Warren Road for safety, so that a bike that's going from South Harbor onto South Street could pull over into that island. Right. Yeah. The 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 overall is to be able to have a safe um, entree to the bike trail from on uh, Timberley. Yes. That's that the that's the goal of this is that um, to bring um, bikers safely from Timberley area directly to the rail trail. Yeah, that is correct. And so um, this is just a preview for you all at 10 tomorrow night at 7. <laughs> we'll have the rest. Um, Bill Rideout is presenting. Yeah. So. All right. Um, it is 6.30, so why don't we have Harrison on, and then we'll come back to the CBA appeal. So thanks, Harrison, Hello. for coming out. So I know it's been a little since the last meeting we had on this topic. Um, but um, I have answers to a few of the questions from last time. Okay, before you start, let me just, for people at home, um, Harrison is here to talk about uh, the possible redesign of the website. So the town's website. The town's website. I should have started with that. Yeah, just so just so people at home know that we all know that what Harrison is doing, but so people are aware. So go ahead, Harrison. I'm sorry. All right. So the questions from last time. So um, you asked two, and I have one uh, from Teresa. Um, as far as person profiles go, that's not a, a thing that um, Revise has in their system. So that's um, not something present there at all that we have to worry about. Um, it's not as problematic as. No, it, it's that's not like we don't have to do it the way Civic Plus has it. Okay. Um, you also asked Veronica about um, what the content management system is made out of, and that's uh, with Java, and it's not a, a particular framework to my knowledge. Um, and Teresa asked about um, being able to sync your calendar um, to like the, the town calendar to your Outlook, or um, the same thing could be done with your iCloud or any of the other calendar apps. And that is possible and it's available for everyone by default. Um, and that's there's a button you can click to do it on the website. So it's easy enough there. Thank you for that. Yeah, no problem. Um, so I'll turn it over now actually to um, Thomas Jean, who's our um, proposal manager with Revise. Um, he's up there. I don't know. Um, if he has uh, screen presenting um, permissions, um, we're going to let him 
Dave, Dave or Hartley, can we let uh, Thomas Jean share screens? Okay, I'll take care of that. Thanks, Hartley. And he's going to do a demo for you guys to see what the system looks like. Okay. All right. Hello, everyone. Can you all hear me okay? Yes, you can. All right. And can we see my screen? It should say revise there. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'll be respectful of your time here, and I'll just go ahead and dive in. Feel free to stop me if you have questions, but I'll try to wrap up my portion of things here within about 10 or 15 minutes. And then whatever time you all have left, I can stick around for any as many questions as you have. So uh, real quick, just a little bit about us. We are, of course, revised. We're headquartered up here in Troy, Michigan. And uh, all we do is build websites for government. We've been doing that for over 20 years now. Uh, and a couple things we do really well. One is our content management system, which I'll get into a little bit later here and show you what that's all about. Uh, we update that system about four times a year with new features, so it's always getting better. Uh, on top of that, we'll do 100% custom design from scratch. So we won't use a pre-built template. We won't use a copy of another website. We'll design it exclu exclusively just for your town. And then also we'll do a full content audit and re-architecture. So rather than just copying and pasting everything as is from your current site, we'll actually go through it and develop a much ideally easier site map so that folks can find what they're looking for uh, easier than they can today. Uh, in terms of our client base, we've now launched about 3,000 websites nationwide. All of them are cities, towns, counties, and villages, just like yourselves. Here are some of our cities. Here are some of our counties, and I'll try to show you a few of these as if we have time here today too. Now also with us, as long as you're with us, you do get tech support. Um, our tech support's a little bit different. First off, when you call in, you should expect that we know you by name or that we learn it very quickly. Um, also the people that you speak with on our tech support team, uh, they are developers themselves. So the advantage of that is that the person you're talking to is actually the person fixing uh, whatever issue it is that you might have at the time. Uh, on top of that, we have a 24-hour customer support portal. We have support at revise.com. We have an online help center, and we do retraining for free anytime. So as long as you're with us, um, whether you get a new employee or someone on staff already just forgot how to do something, they can contact us, and we can set up a training for them pretty quickly. Okay, so um, real quick on the process. So if you were to move forward with a new website, we would do a, what we call a kickoff meeting. And in that kickoff meeting, uh, you'd meet with us, um, myself, as well as one of our very talented designers here at Revise. Um, they would then provide you with a mock-up of what we're proposing the website would look like. Here's one we did a couple years ago, about a year and a half ago for Belcher, Belcher Town there in Massachusetts. Uh, you'll get to review that design and you get to come back to us with as many changes as you want made. Could be color, could be style. You could say that uh, you don't like these news items here. You could scroll down and say, get rid of the calendar entirely. Uh, you could even tell us that you completely dislike the entire thing and we did a horrible job. Um, I'll have a quick question. Yes. So at the very first kickoff meeting, you have the mock-up already available. Is that what you're saying? Uh, no, we'll, we would provide that about two to three weeks later. The kickoff meeting is just intended to kind of go through other sites that you might like and, and why. Um, we'll ask you, you know, colors, what type of elements you want on the site, basically just get a sense of what you're looking for. Okay. Um, some towns we work with have really no idea. They just know they don't like what they have. And then other towns are very specific on what they want. So usually it's somewhere in the middle and we're good at finding out what uh, what's what will fit into what you all want. Um, now from there, we do as many revisions as needed. Uh, this was the second revision we did for Belcher Town. It doesn't look like we made too many drastic changes, but we can. And then um, usually most clients do about, I would say about three revisions. And then from there, they approve it. We code out the website. We add in our content management system and all of the features that we include, everything in this list, many of which I won't be able to show you today. Um, we then add in all of your content. So we build out every single page of the new website and we do training after that. Training is unlimited for as many people as, as need it for as long as they feel is necessary. Most people um, will only need about a two to three hour training, but it can be different for anyone or everyone if needed. Uh, and then from there, you get to decide when you go live. Um, your current website should stay live the whole time unless that vendor 
you know, randomly were to cut you off for some reason. But um, other than that, we can make the, the transition very seamless. And usually that process takes about three to four months, give or take. Um, and, then, and then we go live. So, and obviously there is no real cookie cutter process with the way we do things. Everything is really tailored to, to, to you all and, and what's best for you. Um, so we can speed things up. We can slow things down, really go at a pace that you're all um, comfortable with. So, okay. Well, real quick, I'll just show you a couple features and then I'll end it by showing you our content management system here um, with, with the time that we have left. So one thing uh, you, you'll see with us is that we're constantly uh, upgrading our features and those upgrades come to you um, automatically as, uh, as long as you're with us. So one of those things we just did was our calendar. Um, and this is just one example of what a calendar could look like. Uh, in this case, we've got kind of a grid here to the left. On the right, we've got maybe the next upcoming four events or so. You can also have as many sub-calendars as you want. In this case, they have three total. I think the most I've seen was 50. That's probably too many, but you can have as many as you want. Um, <laughs> and, th and then when you click view all events, it's uh, all color coded. You get to pick the colors. Uh, it's also searchable. So if you're searching for a particular event, um, like a festival or something, you could type in the word festival here and anything with that in the title comes up. Then when you click it, frankly, uh, the events themselves just look prettier, prettier uh, than most calendars out there today. You've got a date and time displayed prominently. You've got a photo. Here's all your information for the event. You can put your Zoom invite in here if you want to. Um, your agenda can be right in there. It even has an interactive map here that shows the, uh, the location of that particular event. And it can be different for each of them if, uh, if you need it, so. Okay, um, also we include uh, what we call eNotify. It essentially allows folks to sign up for notifications through an email and or a text message if they choose. All they have to do is type in their email address, they then type in their phone number, and then they choose what they wanna be updated on and where. The best part about this is it's totally self-managed, meaning you don't have to deal with folks um, <laughs> losing their passwords or needing to sign in for an account. It's just their email address and their phone number if they choose, and then it verifies it and they pick what they want. Um, so very low workload on your side of things. And then final thing I'll show you real quick, and then I'll briefly show you the uh, content management system is, uh, this is what we call our public service request system. You can call it whatever you want, uh, but it essentially allows folks to submit a request based on a map view here. Uh, and those things can be anything from a street light being out to a pothole to, my neighbor's grass is too long, in my opinion. Uh, <laughs> and uh, all, all folks would have to do is click report an issue, and then they can either sign in or continue as a guest. And I'm logged into the wrong one. You can either sign in or, or continue as a guest, and then they simply take this little dropper here and put it anywhere within the town, and the address updates based on where that is. Of course, they can also type in the address, uh, and if they're on their phone, they can share their location here and it'll input the address right there for them automatically. They then choose their issue. We have a question real quick. Okay, okay sorry. you might be answering it right now. Go ahead. How does it direct to the different departments? And I think this might be it. Yeah, you got, you got me. Um, each issue is you get to set who it's directed to and also how many people it's directed to. So like, for example, a pothole, you could have, say, three people get updated uh, within 24 hours if the first two don't, don't deal with it. Um, or if it's really important, you could have like 10 people in the matter of eight minutes uh, <laughs> updated um, via email. Those folks can then respond to the issue both publicly or privately with or without a photo. So you can kind of pick and choose which ones um, go public and which ones do not based on the sensitivity of the issue or that sort of thing, so. Cool. All right, and then just real briefly, I just wanna show you real quick the, uh, the content management system, because all of this can be really great and uh, innovative and that sort of thing, but if you can't edit it and you can't easily update the site, it's kind of useless. So um, what you're looking at here, this is our demo site. Your site, of course, will look different, but the editing will be very similar and super easy. So you just click login, you have a username and a password, and now you're in. And the very simple concept is you just go to the page that you want to edit. You click edit page content. And then you start making your changes. So you can have a page title. You can also have an activation date, an expiration date, and time. 
And then here's your content. The content, um, you can add photos, you can make them bigger, smaller, you can delete them entirely. Uh, you can add in as many documents as you want. You just click this little icon here, click upload file, find your file or upload something new, click save, click continue, and now it's attached right there. Now, obviously I did that pretty fast. We'll train you on how to do it. Probably close to just as fast. Um, if you wanted to send an email or text notification, you just check that little box there for anyone who has subscribed to the page. Then you click save and it's live just like that. Now there is also a workflow approval process. So if you want to approve certain uh, people's edits before they go live, you can do that. Um, otherwise you can just go live right away as I did there. So, and everything else on the site, regardless of how big it is or what features we include is edited in a very similar, very easy way. Uh, you simply click on the button that says edit near the thing that you wanna change and start having fun. There is also a history log. So if you've ever um, made a mistake or you just wanna to revert to something you used before, you click copy this version, it drops in, you click save, and then you're back to where you started. So it makes it super easy if you make a mistake or anything like that. So with that, I'll go ahead and, uh, and stop talking. Um, any questions or things you all wanna see more of or? Um, I kinda want a tour of the agendas and minutes section. Like, is there a way to build an agenda kind of dynamically that and put um, files in? Like for today's meeting, we have files that um, support each of the topics we're talking about, um, with the goal being that the public could see it prior to the meeting. They could um, look at it. So, yep, yeah. quick answer is yes. Um, and you can also, of course, continue to do it the way you are doing it if you if you prefer that way. But um, basically, you would just come in to this uh, area here. You would either click Create Meeting, or if you've already created one, you just click Edit. And then, as you can see, we've got topics like Pledge of Allegiance. Um, you can reuse topics. You can copy topics from a previous agenda. And then, when you finalize the agenda, whenever that is, maybe you know three days before. Um, anyone who's on the public subscription uh, email list will automatically get updated that there's a new uh, agenda available, and then they can log in and review it and take a look at it before the meeting if they want to. And, and how do you create that as an event then too? Or is it just you meeting? So it can be a couple ways. We can automatically feed the agenda into the event calendar, or it would show up uh, within your upcoming meetings, which I don't have any actually showing here, but it would it would show basically a listing of your upcoming meetings here. These are all past, but you would see a, a listing here. Okay. That's a lot easier. It is a lot easier. saved so much time. A ton mm -hmm. of things at the back end. Yeah. Yeah. And then you can also have um we call them contributors. So anyone who typically contributes to your you know, regular meeting agenda, as soon as you create the new meeting, they would get an email saying, hey, this agenda is ready to go, but we need your report added for the month. They would then come in here and be able to upload a file, okay. pick it from wherever they're you know, needing it, and then it would upload, and then the clerk or whoever finalizes the agenda could review it. And then when it is ready, finalize it before it goes out to the public. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really, that's a, yeah. And so it, it, it's not difficult to have it automatically pre-populate the calendar though, is it, Thomas? No, depending on how you want the event set up in the calendar, but that's, there's ways around each, each of those challenges. <laughs> And can you speak a little bit to the functionality of having the calendar automatically um, populate, like your Outlook calendar with the, I don't know if you have the possibility, but um, with all the meetings that are on the calendar and then you can accept tentative or decline and then your calendar would be appropriately updated? Um, I guess I don't quite understand the... The question, so you're saying- Well, so like today there were five meetings, let's say okay. on the calendar. Um, yep. 
and I'd like to be aware of all of them. I like to have them in the calendar that I typically work with, which is my Outlook calendar, which gives me reminders and whatever. Oh, sure. um, but two, one, I knew I would definitely not go to, so that would show up on at decline. I would decline, and it wouldn't show on my calendar. Um, but one was tentative, and then this was mandatory. Does it, does that functionality exist to sync? with um, either Google Calendar or Outlook Calendar to do that? Yes, actually both Google and uh, Outlook you can sync with. Um, so you could have a filtered version of any calendar where say for example, it's just meetings and mm -hmm. then you can click export and it pulls them all into your calendar. And say there was one on here that you didn't want to attend, you could remove that from, the, from what you've accepted. Um, otherwise you would pull in the whole filtered version of this calendar. Okay, thank you very much. I think she has a question. <laughs> I don't know what she wants. <laughs> All, day. All day long, I don't know. <laughs> Any other questions? Happy with what I um, see. Can I see a home page? What does the home page look like? Like how the how does news look? It can look any way you want. Obviously, we'll, we'll um, you know discover that in the discovery and design process. But I'll just bring up one at random here. Um, a couple of these sites here. One second. So in this case, they call it, this is Arcadia, California. They call it Arcadia Now. That's kind of what they branded their news. So they've got like the key, most important news items here on the left. And then- it Looks familiar. We're watering. That's <laughs> three here. Yeah. I'll show you another one. This will, this is a city of Olympia, Washington. And they do theirs in this fashion, but um, what we'll ask you is we'll send you a bunch of different examples and you can kind of pick and choose which ones you like, and then we'll design the news to fit your preferences. All right, thank you. All right. Are there any other questions? Or... No. All right. Well, thank you, Thomas. Uh, that was all good information. Yeah, yeah thanks. thanks. Actually, I'm sorry, I'm double muted here. Um, just a, one more question. Do you find it's easier to uh, start from scratch, kind of re reinventing your own homepage or picking one that you already have uh, built out here, using one you say, I really like the city of Quincy and modifying that? Do you, do you have a preference on how to work with that? So we don't copy any website, but we do ask you to tell us the three websites you like most and why okay. and that so we do pull in different elements from the ones that you like so it's a little bit of a hybrid approach of both of those we want it to be most representative of, of your town so um that's why we try to make sure we're customizing every design we can for every city and town okay thank you thank you I, I want to ask one more question. How, how many towns in Massachusetts do you have? Do you know? I don't know the exact answer. I can get you that number. I would say it's probably 200 or so or close over the years, about 200, maybe active 90, 80, 90, something like that. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Well, I think that concludes um, my segment of the meeting. Thanks again to Thomas for the demo um, and all the information. Um, but yeah, that's all that I have for mine. Thank you all for your time. All right, thank, thank you, Thomas. You. Thank you, Thomas. Um, so I, I think what we need is, we might have it already, a comparison civic plus to this as far as online costs. We can we can send out the, the board members that specific just broke down very quickly. Yeah, and then as far as funding goes, I mean we we um, budgeted for a civic class for the fiscal year. If we're gonna get started, you know, what do we need to do, and is there a warrant article? I 
Yes, that's something that we would have to contemplate, I think, especially if we're going to have them running in parallel right. while it's being built. Yes. So one thing, um, it doesn't look like Thomas is here anymore, but I think the um, one thing that's good about Revis is we're not paying for both at the same time. Once we flick the lights on for Revis, then then we start paying for it. But if we're if we're paying for Civic Plus in the meantime, then we aren't paying for revise at the same time. But not during the demo. We don't pay until the no, not until during the, the design. Not during yeah. the mock up and the design and all that good stuff. We don't pay yeah. for that. Once it's public, then that's when we start with the um the, the payment. Yeah. And we can, I can send, all right, you guys might have the proposal that details how that would be split out. Mm -hmm. um, but we can also side by side that with did Civic Plus. Did we look buses. at that already? Did we receive that already? You might have received it. We didn't go over it, discuss it in a meeting. We haven't like discussed it. that in a meeting. Could, yeah, could you resend that then? We can, we can that. put that on the October 18th meeting and get it out early enough that we can have some time to look at it. Sure. And I'll, I'll get something for you that um, Civic Plus's original document and kind of a side-by-side -side kind of summary document, what it, the different timelines and costs look like. Um, so that way you can review that with it. Yeah, I also have a concern. Did I hear him right? Did he say, I know he didn't have the exact numbers, but did he say he thought he had at one point like up on and off around 300, but now he was down to under 100 did i hear that he said he said uh maybe around 200 over the years over the years and now uh, active 90. and do we have any any um any idea like why it seems like i said it looks very impressive to me what i'm looking for but do we have any way to get uh, uh, knowledge on why a community would have chose to stop using it, what problems they had. We can certainly look into that. Um, I did reach out to a handful of references um, and they seem to have an overall positive experience. Um, and I think um, a lot of the time saving features and functionality that we would see from this. Um, yeah, I, I I'll certainly look into what negative. I think I think his numbers are up. I think to tell you the truth, that seemed a little like half of the his clients are gone. The way it sounded, the way he was saying it, so it got me a little nervous. I think the way it, it probably is is it's you know over the years you might have towns you know maybe it, when your contract is up you might you know go out to bid or maybe not for this low of an expense, but see, you know, what costs more or less if Civic Plus costs less and if we're budget conscious, then we might switch to them. Um, you know, I, I think that's probably what it boils down to. Yeah, that, the, the reality of what we've realized is there really are three options. What we have, which is the like super basic Civic Plus, that's the cheapest municipal website out there, which has a little bit, it, it, functionality is not as robust. easy as uh, yeah yeah robust is a good word we have something like revise which is slightly more expensive um, which has enhanced functionality and then there's the civic plus kind of like cadillac which they have out there which is more expensive um uh which has a lot of functionality i don't know i mean it I, I don't know whether it has more functionality than revise or not. It's just considered completely out of our price range. So it's not. Right. Well, I think number one, it's in our price range, but number two, there's, um, there's the customer, the, the customization that we need, especially bringing on some of the billing, um, some of the other um, software that we're trying to incorporate in it. That's why I think it's, it's, it's real because we can't put it into what we have now. Yeah, and that, I know that it, with some of the, the the things that they use in that system, like that text editor for their content management system, mm -hmm. I know we can put custom HTML into that mm -hmm. and have it present what we want it to, you know, and really get into the, you know, the low level, um, you know, we could probably embed JavaScript into that if we wanted to do something mm -hmm. fancy. So, mm -hmm. um, so it, it's, I think it's much more complicated. It's more along the lines of what we're looking for. I don't want to go to something new and not be able to do what we wanted to do. I think yeah. this this is. And the other thing, which I know we've mentioned before, which I, 
Thomas actually didn't mention during his presentation is in year four, there's a free right. upgrade, uh, like completely redesign, 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 yeah, yeah. redesign which so. is, I mean, that for free, that's kind of a big deal. Yeah. Uh, do we? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. um, anyway, that we will get you out the um, the, uh, the details, the, the details and, the, and maybe a potential timeline. We'll do. All right. So you know, um, give an acceptance and special time when it should be decided. Yeah. Thank you, Harrison. Yeah. Thank you, Harrison. Thanks, Harrison. Yep. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you, Harrison. Yes, I'm going to see where we are. Uh, we're going to um, 4.6, the mandatory referral for 161.9. Why is that not? In the shed one. It wasn't there last night either. Yeah, I was just about to say that I'm don't have any information on it. Uh is there any communication? Do you have a hard time for that? The referral for one sixty one It's the uh it's up on what sixty one Brookline Street. It's the old um it's the property that has the uh, little um, cottages and the storage, the storage facility. facility. And now I looked at it in communications. So that's probably my fault for not moving it in. Um, and the question is, is it possible to move it to the 18th since we haven't had time to review? Since we haven't all had time. Do you think it's in communications or something? Yes. I didn't see it there either. Um, I know I looked at it. I, I read it. Did I, I put it in the 18? Secretly wanted it on the 18. Well, it would have been in September if you look in the September folder. There it is. I'm looking at yeah. it. It's the first two in the September communications folder. Um, it was put there on September 26th. Um, so let me just look at this. Let's see if I can get a date. September what? September 26th. Is the yeah, yeah, I put, put it there. in the communication on that date. So I probably looked at it in communications. Put so it on is the it on the, 7, the September 7th or the September 20th meeting? It's not in the meetings. It's, just it's on the not in the meetings. It's in the communications oh, under right. September. You probably looked in October. Yeah. It's my guess. Yeah. I, I want to see the date of the... Return comments prior to October 19th. Um, so we could still do it on the 18th. We could do it on we the 18th. You just have to turn the comments around yeah. very quickly. All right. Sorry, you guys. Uh, so let's move this to the 18th. I apologize. I should have double checked to make sure that it was there. Yeah. I thought I had looked through everything. I'm sorry, you know yeah. why I didn't create a folder for it? That's why I probably read it and um, yeah, that's right. put it on here and didn't create a folder. So uh, I got gotcha. you. Okay. CBA referral is what it's. It's a top two. Yeah. And it's a, I mean, the first two in the list. Yeah. We'll put that on the 18th, thing. and then we should be able to get yes. it to the to the board the next day. Yeah. We can do that. So, and now give you guys time to read it. I, I have read it, but I read it last week when I was. I'm sorry. No, that's. I, I, I apologize. But I got to that kid. So yeah. Yeah. You did. You did. <laughs> So hear that, uh, Emmy? We took care of it. Is she on? No, but she'll see it on <laughs> so, someday. Okay. She'll yeah. see it. <laughs> um, all right. ARPA projects. I don't think I had anything for that. That's a no. standing 
Yeah, in case something comes up. Just in case, yes. All right, town administrator updates and reports. Yes, okay, so <laughs> thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I had several that I wanted to go through. Um, uh, I will try to do them uh, as briefly as possible. Um, um, number one, uh, we have uh, a signed lease agreement for the soccer fields. Um, so we just need to, and I, I, I so I would be looking for a, uh, we either have a vote to have the, the, um, the board sign it, or you could vote to authorize me to sign it. We just need to, I think, get these signed and turned around. It's, uh, it's up to the will of the body. But. I, I think we should have a motion to sign it us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, uh, so is there a motion um, to sign the uh, lease agreement for Squanquick Meadows out of session? I'll make a motion that we sign the lease agreement for Squanquick Meadows out of session. Second. Um, any further discussion? All right, Teresa, have you vote? Teresa, Moise, yes. A sexton Iranian, yes. And Veronica Patel, yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's number one. Um, um, number two, we uh, as the uh, the town properties committee and the board had voted on um, for the uh, the Commonwealth project to put the the um, uh, plaque at the, the the memorial out uh, at the common. Um, so I met with the gentleman um, who. Um, is behind the project today, actually. Um, he had submitted um, uh, details about um, the uh, kind of the look and the shape of the specs of the uh, kind of like a headstone in, in, in shape, um, uh, about three feet tall and about a little bit less than a foot and a half wide. Um, um, included in the SharePoint is a photograph of another one that they did um, at a different location and the spec sheet that he had submitted um, under the town administrator's updates. Uh, screenshot, it says. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of generally what it looked like. We went out uh, to the common, he and I, to try to look to see if there might be an appropriate place to put it. Um, given the um, the Memorial Day uh, um, uh, events that take place at the Common um, and the location of the flagpole and of the other large memorial there. Um, we did think that that end of the Common probably made the most sense so that it could that that this placard could be included as part of the those uh, events mm -hmm. um, and tentatively um based on looking at the space it looks like a, a good place to to put it might be um if you're familiar with uh if you're standing at 119 and looking down the common toward the bandstand you've got the memorial front and center you've got the flagpole to the left of the memorial and there's space in between the flagpole and the sidewalk and you could put it about halfway between the flagpole and the sidewalk and it would be about equidistant from the flagpole as the memorial large memorial is now, but still off the sidewalk. Yeah. Um, um, uh, and so tentatively, I think we thought that would be a good place for it. When folks are gathered at Memorial Day, they would be looking towards it. It would be kind of in front of them. Um, the wording is going to have uh, the gentleman's name, um, uh, where he served, when he uh, died in combat, and the fact that he was the first citizen of Townsend who died in World War One, to die in World War One, while serving in World War One, And so I think that would, that sort of um, would kind of bring to light everybody why his monument would be there as the first Townsend resident to have served and given his life in World War One. Okay. So the next um, steps are going to be, they're gonna work directly with the, um, um, whoever's doing the headstone um and once they have the specific specs with the writing you know, we're going to come back and bring that to the board of selectmen and we'll um, kind of print up an aerial photo of the of the um the common with the location for it um i also want to kind of uh, 
touch base with the cemetery and parks and make sure that they don't have any concerns about that location. I don't know if there's an irrigation system. I, I just want to touch base with them and make sure that they're fine with that location as well. Mommy? Yeah, Eric, um, Mommy, I'm sure you did, but there's, a, I know you know, there's a bunch of events that take place along the, where tents go up along yes. the walkway. So you do want to make sure they're, they're only allowed uh, 12, 12 feet, but you do want to make sure it's 12 feet back so you don't get in the way of uh, the bandstand events and the the the, pray, the uh, fall festival and the, those type of ones because those will have some, something 12 feet back. Okay, that's good to know. We can we can make sure that that distance is in there as well. Yes. Yeah, because you know those crafters, they don't, they don't want anything in their way. <laughs> True. Um, and so that's the update on the come off. Um, uh, so a, a, a very quick update. We had spoken about this a while ago, which is um, working on um, uh, getting some potential information on retiree health insurance. Uh, it just so uh, happens that we managed to dig up a report from KMS actuaries that a former time administrator Andrew Sheehan had done back in December of 2011 on this specific topic about retiree health care. And so um, uh, the information is enlightening, although not up to date, obviously. So I reached out to um, the actuarial company who performed this report, uh, and they're going to send a proposal to update it using Good. current town information. So hopefully we can have this turned around. You know, I, I I I told them I was hoping to have it, you know, sometime in mid-November, and they said that wouldn't be a problem to get a report on um, the actuarials for for uh, uh, retiree health care. And I'm also going to ask them if they have any um, suggested best practices about uh, an OPEB trust um, to set up to pay for all the retiree health care. Um, which is important, um, and and to make sure that it's paid for, kind of like going forward to fund the trust. If there's an amount that we could could you know um, put in, put in and if we if we if we front loaded it mm -hmm. and let it start accumulating interest, while our payments will be very low because we're going to have very few retirees, how long would that last us? And hopefully they'll be able to give us some sort of a an idea if we can you know about funding that trust. And what we would need to put in every year to keep it going. All right. Um, so when I get that information, I will let folks know. Um, uh, okay, so we have, this is a little bit more challenging. We have two issues that have come up um, with Melanson um, in their two separate roles for the town right now. So the first is how I'm going to do with their audit of the uh, FY21 financials and based on uh, federal funds that were passed through to the town in the FY21, they have to do what's called a single audit. It was contemplated in their contract that there, there's, so there was a specific cost in the contract if they did have to do a single audit. And based on the information that they were provided from the town, um, uh, we expended sufficient federal funds in FY21 to do require a single audit. Um, okay. And so well, that federal funds mm -hmm. so it would be cbg and cares were the bulk of the federal funds that we expected right. that year right. an audit on cbdg what's well, it it's a, it's a no. no it's not an audit of cbg it's a single audit of the of if, both. if you have more than seven hundred fifty thousand in um federal grant funds spent and we did about four hundred thousand with cbdg yeah and 353 or so something like that 83 was cares, 83 was cares act right um some of that i figured out my body sensation i found old emails and it looks like so it, there were drawdowns um that were done in early july of 2022 and it's part of it's in you can kind of see it um well, I have I have some stuff on, it. and that's what made it. When I looked at things in June of 2021, it was lower. I wouldn't have anticipated 
both from CARES Act, because we had not filed for CARES Act expenses in March or June of 2021. Right. And so that came up after the fact and once Terry got in yeah. okay. and um, started working. Uh, and these things, we need the audit, yeah. is what I'm saying. Yeah, so, we need, <laughs> so it's a single audit. It's a federal requirement. The, the cost is $3,500. It was contemplated in their auditing contract, and they just let us know that based on these numbers, we are going to have to do it. They're no, I'm, I think I'm. I think we and should have it yeah. now. Um, what we will have this come up again because of BARCA funding, um, because we will more than likely expend 750k, not in FY22, but probably in FY23. So we need to buy some um, No, with ARPA, you can. Um, if ARPA funds are what take you up there, you can use your ARPA funds for a single audit. And the contract with Roselli for FY22, 23, 24 uh, spells out the single audit okay. at $3,000. Okay. The Melanson didn't spell it out. They just, in their re, um, re upping letter for 2021, yeah, for, for, for the audience, in they specified 3500 okay. And they did not, in the original contract, the single audit wasn't, wasn't in there. Wasn't directly in there. Okay. So indirectly, yes, but not directly. So that's a that's something that we are going to, I've, I've talked to, to, to Zach via email, and so they're going to be doing that single audit as required. Okay. Um, in addition, um, with respect to Melanson's accounting services, um, uh, it turns out that they are going to exceed their $35,000 that we had set aside for them for the closeout of FY22. Now that was in their, in their agreement with us, they did just provide us an estimate of 35,000 in our agreement. It was not a cap. It was just an estimate. They estimated that it would be thirty-five thousand. They have indicated that they're going to exceed that. There were, unfortunately, quite a bit more reconciliation that than they they thought that some of the months had been reconciled between the accounting and the treasurer, and none had. So where where are we at with that though now? With the, they're still working through the closeout of FY twenty two. It is not complete. So FY twenty three reconciliation. That's not begun. I will. Ha I'll have to check with with. Uh, uh, I, I believe that they've been doing that in parallel, working on the closeout and while they're reconciling going forward. But I'll have to double check to make sure that that's the case. Okay. So we will need to identify funding to, to finish the closeout of FY22. So it's salary, does it have to come from a salary line? Um, in other words. I'm sorry, no, I, 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 I missed what. All right, is this considered salary? Or is it considered um, services? Services. I mean, so th this is services. We the thirty-five thousand was encumbered from prior from last year's. Right. For we we encumbered it and 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 put it into a, a into an encumbrance that we've been paying the Melanson bills for the FY22 right. Will account. we be able to pay for it in the, the salary? For the accountant, I we've been paying for Melanson out of that account, out of the salary line for the accountant, right? Because that's the service that's being provided is in lieu of the salary, right? That's how we've been paying for it this year. So we could pay for it. We will be in deficit at the end of the year, but we already knew that because there was only eighty thousand dollars in that line, and the right. FY twenty three accounting service is ninety thousand. But we did set aside. We took it from free cash. I thought the thirty five k. The encumbered money. We didn't that, take it from. Well, I mean, I thought we took it from free cash. Well, what? It, you know what? 
we took it from money that we had left over at the end of the year. It wasn't free cash yet because we knew we were going to spend it on these things. But yes, it was money at the end of FY22 that we... Okay, I, I need to look at some stuff. Yeah, because that, that was... Um, we knew we were going to have those expenditures. We made sure there was sufficient funds in the accounting in the accounting department's line to be able to encumber them so that they wouldn't be rolled into free cash. Right. I so I, I'm going to pull up my I have to find my ATM budget because um, we had not entered into the account with with into the uh, agreement with Melanson until after the town meeting. Um, and I would love it if there was money, <laughs> extra money for this, but I, I, I don't think it was a accomplished at town meeting i think it was part of it well it was still i know that you have a date on that because it was known we knew at town meeting that we would need this because we already had the resignation from the interim treasurer uh, okay. yeah so this was signed by on may 17 2022 with right. the agreement with Melanson. I know what all happened and it, with the, the the before I got here on the 16th, Ross had already reached out to request. Yes. Um, that was already in process. Good. So the, the, the question, I guess this is not something we necessarily have to answer tonight. I'm just kind of putting it on the okay on yeah. the board's radar that um, you know we we do have this extra expense. Above and beyond the thirty-five thousand. Do we have an estimate for how much? So in their in their information, they said they do not anticipate it going this high, but they said we should put aside fifteen to twenty-five thousand extra. So um, I think the the estimate is is between ten and fifteen. But that that was what they suggested was between fifteen and twenty five thousand to put something. So all that being said, I don't. It doesn't require any action of the board tonight, and I can certainly investigate the you know the the town meeting the the, the town meeting that happened to see if there was something that I'm currently unaware of that was was to anticipation of this. Um, Okay. But I will, um, you know, I, before next before the next meeting, I'll try to get a more detailed. Hopefully, they'll be further along with this and closer to the end, and I can get a more detailed number from them, um, so that we'll know in our preparations for going forward. Too. So, is um, FY twenty three accounting work ongoing, or has it not been touched yet? FY accounting work is ongoing. And that is also coming out of the accounting, the accounting line. line item, yes. So Laurie, who is acting as our accountant, is not the only is, is not the only person at Melanson who is working on our accounting service. She is primarily doing FY twenty three. There's other staff that are primarily working on the closeout of FY twenty two. Other staff from Melanson that are primarily working on the closeout of FY22, including Lori. Do we have bills from them? Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So that was more of an informational. Um, as we go forward. Um, and the final piece that I wanted to, um, well, one of the final pieces I want to touch face with folks is something I did include in the SharePoint, which is the um, MOU between the town and TCAM. Right. Um, and so it's two and a half pages. Um, it has been, um, 
as I mentioned earlier, going back and forth between both parties. I do believe it provides the town with the um, the protection of the services that the town's looking for while allowing TCAM to, you know, rev up their operations and, and get going, which I know is something everybody's in the um, ready for, ready to have to get started. Um, and um, Chaz did, uh, and I have talked about it several times about the specifics of the MOU. Okay. Um, no, please do. This is. Parties also agree that as installation of video drops using existing blank fall within the TTM technical obligations under the grant agreement. What's the blank? What are you reading that? This is phase three. Phase three, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was supposed to be filled in by them. I apologize. I'm trying to figure out what the word should be. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Using yeah. existing cable. I, I, I don't know. I mean, what, yeah. what is that word? Um, Steve is on. I am on. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just having a little bit of internet issues. What was the question? Maybe I can help. It's in phase three. Um, it's a it's a sentence that reads um, in the paragraph that's uh, that's under the bullets. The parties agree that a new quote shall be requested from Comcast to incorporate the entirety of the proposed work. The parties also agree that as installation of video drops using existing blank fall within the TCAM technical obligations under the grant agreement, TCAM shall communicate with Compass directly on these matters to efficiently implement these installations at TCAM's expense. What's the blank? I, I think that has to do with the, the drops, Madam Chair. So there are, I believe, like we had talked before, there is drops that are are already, um, I guess, not in place except for town hall, you know. But they're slated for the West Townsend reading room, the high school, the um, the library, the senior center. I believe that refers to having having a drop, but I think it's the blank is where the drop would go, which would be two twenty two. I'm just having trouble pulling it up again. I'm having just really. I'm having now it pops up unstable again internet issues um, i can't share screen um partly or dave if you're there can i be given the ability to share the screen hold on one second I'll pull up no. my email real oh, i can't actually i can't I like matching. What's the blank? I, I, I'm trying to figure out what makes sense there. I understand what Steve is saying, but what makes sense there? Okay, Ronica, I think you have it. It's I've equipment. got it now. Um, it would be equipment or systems or locations. Locations. I think it's locations because, again, we like we discussed before. Uh, the parties agree that the, I see it now. Okay, the parties, of course, would request request. To incorporate the tiny the proposed work the price I'm not sure if you can hear me in the basement 
Yeah. 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 Existing yeah. placement fall within the T yeah, or locations. Again, there there's five drops that and, and the town only utilizes honestly one of them right now. So again, it goes back to what we discussed before. Um, the technical obligations is we're going to make sure that that town hall is never comes offline. So that's always going to be that fiber optic cable between 222 and town hall. So mm -hmm. either that's using existing um, locations for, you know, I believe that's locations. Or it should be equipment. That's equipment. Now that I'm going back, I finally got to another. That's equipment. Existing equipment. Okay. That's equipment. Yeah, that's equipment. I'm sorry. I I just saw. I just found it on the other one. Now that's equipment. Nice. So we have to have the equipment, and it does. And I think Chad, you brought this up before, where you have analog um, on one system and non-analog on another. They actually do communicate with each other. We check that. Yeah. So we don't have to upgrade, you know, town hall to um we don't we don't have to update. The the fiber optic cable is gonna allow it to communicate. All right. This looks reasonable to me. Um and everybody agrees to it, correct? Yes, this is as I said, the the I got this from TCAM's council. Although they haven't seen the addition of the word equipment, so <laughs> they probably want to charge TCAM to review that. Yeah, I just texted. Uh, I, I just texted <laughs> council and said we added a word. Don't charge me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there you go. That works for me. Um, yeah, I think I think that this is a a um I think a, a document that both parties are comfortable with at this point. And so um, the reason I bring it up is because I would request the board of selectmen authorize me to to sign the MOU with TCAM. If it's in the board's will, I, I agree. Is there a motion to um, uh, designate Eric as Eric Slegel, our town administrator, as the um, signatory for the TCAM MOU? So moved. The beat Teresa, she's trying to find her mute button. <laughs> I was close to it, it me, but I was getting closer. Is that a Teresa Moore second? Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, any further discussion? No, I think, right. Madam Chair, Eric, once approved, I'll come down tomorrow and sign. You know, I'll I'll make arrangements with you to sign that. Okay, that's okay, great. Thank so you. So we need we need a vote. Teresa, how do you vote? Teresa A. Moore, yes. Yeah. A sixth in Iranian, yes. And Veronica Kelly, yes. Okay, so Eric is our signer, and we can get that in process. So thank you very much, Eric and Steve, for being um, here today. Uh, let me, uh, there's uh, one of the, well, there's a couple other things I just wanted to mention very briefly. Uh, after discussions with the clerk's office and with the moderator, um, we've determined that December 13th will be the date of the fall town meeting. And I checked with uh, the clerk, with the moderator, and with town council to make sure that they were all available on that date. So we okay. are locked into December 13th. So moving down just very quickly to Black Point Bottom, and then we'll come back to you, Eric. <laughs> the fall meeting dates, then we will have no November 29th meeting. Because we don't need that then. Yes, we didn't. We only moved it because we because were of thinking about December, December 6th. 6th or whatever. Okay. So we will have a regular meeting on December 6th, the December 13th special town meeting, and December 20th. Okay. And then we have the two November dates. We draw the first, the first and, and the 15th. Okay. Um, um, uh, between now and our net and the next meeting of the board, we do have the first uh, budget summit with the school department that Chaz volunteered to attend. <laughs> so we will be meeting with uh, the members of the other uh, towns and members of the school administration uh, with the budget summit. I believe that's on the 17th. Yes. Um, can I, uh, well, I mess up your train of thought. 
Absolutely not. Um, did no we get anywhere? There was a school committee meeting last night, I believe, October 3rd, and it wasn't listed on the calendar. Have we gotten anywhere with um, our thinking with getting the Again, school yeah. committee meetings posted on the town calendar as opposed to just the the um, school calendar? I don't know that we've heard back from the administration on that yet. We okay. will double check. If not, I'm going to just start posting with a link to the other calendar. So, okay. You could put that on Harrison's desk. I will just search them and okay. <laughs> steal them. Um, uh, I know that our last meeting, it was up in the air when the current land use coordinator's last day would be. Unfortunately, it is Friday. Um, so um, we wish Mike well. He's done a great job during his time here with town. Um, and he will be missed. And as of next Monday, we will be uh, short staffed in the land use department, but we have started, we have posted the position and have already gotten one applicant and hopefully we'll get several more in short order. Uh, we'd like to have a good crop so we can start doing interviews. Yeah, that would be great. Um, we'll need to think about an interview team for that. Absolutely. Um, okay. Um, and, well, we we might want to talk about that because I, ideally we would be interviewing before the next. That's true. Before the, the next meeting, meeting. Um, I'd like if if we get, I don't want to just do one, but if we get any more candidates in the next week or so, I would like to schedule interviews. I propose we use the same team we had before. Um, I know I interviewed Landy's previously. That's why I said that. Uh, <laughs> Beth interviewed Landy's and. I'm not sure if Jessica did or not. I think she might I think, have. I think it was Jessica. I think it was um, Ross, Beth, Jessica, Jessica and you. And me. All at once or? Um, yeah, we met all together what? to interview them as opposed to doing it one at a time. We can do it. We did some. When it was the three um, selectmen interviewing, we did serial interviews because we couldn't all at once. Media, yeah, public. Um, but when we interviewed for treasurer, accountant, um, we yep. did all we of did, those with the team. It was easier, yeah. I thought. Yeah, okay. with the team at, at one time. Well, we checked with the with the respondents to find out if they were okay with that. Okay. okay. Then I will touch base with I think both Beth and Jess are in tomorrow. Okay. I will touch base with them and make sure they're comfortable doing that okay. going forward. And then when I, I will, you, you've already gotten a copy of the first resume. If they're okay with it, I will forward it to them as well. Okay. So All right. Take a that sounds it. good. Um, likewise, the veterans agent um, position, uh, we're going to be posting um, uh, after conversations with uh, Pepperell and Ashby. Um, and looking, unfortunately, at our respective budgets, um, there there is not sufficient funding for us to do a district and hire a full time uh -huh. veterans agent for the district. Uh, the the estimate the estimated cost of that would be probably north of fifty thousand dollars total for the three towns. And I think our total our total budget for the three towns right now is less than twenty. Um, so I think we're going to be in the same boat that we were before. Both towns are still interested in trying to have one person do do it. Mm -hmm. So an unofficial district, part working part time in each town. Um, um, so uh, uh, the other towns are, are going to post it and mentioned in their posting that this is a potential shared job with Ashby and, and Pepperell and Townsend. But uh, part time in each. Part time in each. And to see where veterans are coming. Yeah, I think we have a little over six thousand dollars budgeted that for ours. Very well. Yeah. And Pepperell has more because they're closer to the that they have a larger population than we Ashby has less. They have a smaller population. So, so that's, just curious, then the veterans agent we get three different paychecks. Yes. yes. Interesting. That's what Joe, that's how Joe did it. Yeah. About three separate paychecks, three yeah. separate part time paychecks from three separate towns. So. Yeah, you're right. Six thousand seventy five dollars. Yeah. So the the, I believe it would be a benefit to have a full time agent, but uh, it's it's hard to 
we 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 would probably as a town need to come up with twenty thousand dollars about to to fund it right and then, then ashby would have to come up with 10 and pepper would probably come up with 25 it would probably and, and that's and i don't think any town any any of the three of us are in a position to to, to, to do that this town will handle the um, benefits right well i think that would be that the the idea would be that would be including within okay within that amount it would be including those benefits but it's just a like a personal services contract type thing well if you if you do there's a there's a state statute that allows you to create a district mm -hmm. and that district is, is one town handles the the kind of the person is an employee of one town in the district mm -hmm. and we have a they have a, a municipal contract a municipal contract where we write them a check but it's just not at work unfortunately i mean if we yes. you know i wish i wish that we could but it's not so we'll we'll be posting that as a part-time position um as it was posted I think the last time it was posted was back in 2007 or 2006. Um, Something like that. 15 Joe, years. Joe started in January 2007, yeah. I believe. Yeah. So um, we'll we'll post it again um, uh, as a part-time position. Um, um, one thing I did want to bring up was um something that uh, a, a possible amendment to the constable policy which was uh adding a fee um, um most cities and towns that we investigated charge a fee for their constable applications um uh it, it, it ranged from you know 75 dollars you know on the low end 50 75 dollars on the low end to upwards of 200 dollars on the high end um um and so i wanted to see if the well, the board had any um appetite for adding a, a fee to the constable application process would that include whatever fee is required to um because there was a um what was the check for uh that they needed to so for the quarry or for the, mm -hmm. the dmv check yeah the dmv check i mean I, I i i do think if we were charging a fee it would include it would be used for that we use for for those checks in addition to the administrative work that's on the town for the for all of the, for the rest of the work right um so i would be amenable to that so do we want to amend the policy and um well, I would just I'm just throwing out a number. I would propose that we um, um, that we amend the policy to add a fee of one hundred and fifty dollars um, to cover those costs to cover the costs and the administrative costs of the town over the three years. Um, yeah, I would I would be amenable to that. And it's a one time application fee, not an annual fee, right? right. Just, just when they apply. And and that will make it easier for the checks that need to be done and all of that. The, time for the staff all right so 150. do we need to vote on that we should yeah. yes they should vote on that absolutely um and then we will amend the policy and uh do we need to vote that i mean we've done a first reading second reading way if we're amending the policy we can just add an amendment yes we're just going to add an amendment to add a fee okay so um is there a motion to add a a fee of 100 Fifty dollar an application fee for the three-year term, single application fee covering the three-year term, um, to the constable policy. I make a motion that we add a one hundred and fifty dollar application fee to the council uh, constable policy. I second that. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor, Teresa, how do you vote? Teresa A. Morris, yes. Sixth and Duranian, yes. And Veronica Kelly, yes. And that is, that is it. <laughs> so um, we need to, so with that vote on the constable, we posted already, correct? Did we post with the um, fee for, we need to take, uh, the Take check and, and yeah and amend yeah i think we need to look at that so we'll right. take a look at that for all right thank you
All right. Um, are we ready to roll with reports? Anything else there before we move no, on? No, that, that is it? that is the end of it. Okay. for today. That's the end. All right. Reports from board liaison. So general government, Teresa, that is you. Anything to report? Yeah, the only thing I have actually is from the um, for the board liaison. Um, I've been uh, talking with the conservation committee, and we're putting together just a pamphlet to help uh, understanding of wetlands and responsibilities if you have wetlands on your property, and how to understand the borders of your wetlands, et cetera. So I've been working with that committee on that. Uh, I'm also uh, working to get together with the finance committee to uh, come, uh, as instructed by the chair to come up with a financial planning uh, summary uh, and following through on that and that's about it um i will say that one of the just thinking about finance committee and budgeting for the upcoming fiscal year for the you know fy24 um i I added today when we met, correct, the um, uh, budget statement for the next meeting that the Board of Selectmen has to provide for the department heads. So it's time to start thinking about that. Okay. I don't know if, what, what that has to do with the, if it has anything at all to do with the Finance Committee. So, um, but the budget uh, statement from the, the directive from the board of selectmen right. is on the meeting for October 18th. Okay. Um, how did I turn it? Well, if you look in the in the SharePoint uh, at the October 18th agenda, it's in there. So, um, <laughs> sorry, go ahead, three. That was all I had, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. Uh, elected boards, Chaz, that was you. I do not have anything to to report per se. All right. Um, I I have for public safety. Uh, one is the trick or treating dates. Uh, I talked to Chief Sartell today, and um, October thirty first, six to eight p.m., which is the typical Townsend trick or treating time, um, is perfectly okay. So, do we need to vote to do that? I think we have voted. That was that. quite the alliteration you just did. No Townsend trick or treat time. Okay, well, anyway. Um, Typical Townsend trick or treating time. <laughs> All right, so um, we have voted on that in the past. Do we need to do that, do you think? Or is that I think it, I think by it, consensus? I think it, as long as I, I, you might as well take a vote. Everybody's here. Okay. To say, just decide it. So, is there a motion for trick or treating? I will make a motion that we set Townsend's official trick or treating time for October 31st from 6 to 8 p.m. I second, second that. Um, all those in favor, Teresa, how do you vote? Teresa Amos, yes. A Sexton Duranian, yes. And Veronica. Right, that's barring two feet of snow. Well, yeah, <laughs> important legislation right there. All right. Um, <laughs> the other thing is that I heard from Chief. Shepard, I'm sure everybody has seen by now the announcement about the truck that the um, fire EMS support group is sending to Florida. So um, it's on the website and it's on Facebook pages. And if you're, um, if you have the announcements from the website set up for you at all, you would have received it as well. So they're planning to leave. I can't remember if it's 5 or 6 p.m. tomorrow. Did I put that in the SharePoint? I can pull up the website. It's, yes, it's on the front page. 5 p.m. 5 p.m. Tomorrow. tomorrow. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so um, anybody that can get uh, cereals, soups, pastas, canned items, paper products, diapers for all age groups, toiletries, including feminine hygiene products, tarps, gas cans, nails and other uh, building supplies and household goods. And they're looking for new on this, pots, pans, sheets, pillows, linens, and blankets. So anybody that's able to donate, um, you can take them to the central fire station just to 
uh, the doors on the side there across from Dr. Dennis, and they will accept them gladly. So um, if you're able to contribute, that would be great. They're not looking for cash donations. They're looking for goods. Yeah. So um, that would be great. And that's a short-term ask. And then there's only two things I have. Um, which takes us to communications and announcements. So we do have two retirements of long-time employees um, to announce. Um, let me get to my screen. Um, am I screen sharing stuff? You're not. Okay. Thank you. Don't say that out loud. Now I want to walk around. Yeah, yeah, no, too too worried. Worried. What are you worried yeah. about? <laughs> <laughs> um, can I give everybody uh, the light sensitivity ah, and moving yes. everything around? Um, no, it's not a oh, good sign. Um, okay, so um, maybe I should screen share now for announcements of communication. Does that sound good? Mm -hmm. um, Um, let me see if I've got it. All right, these are our announcements of communications. So the first is the um, uh, resignation of Joe Masola, our veterans agent, and Lieutenant Mark Giancotti. Um, these are both retirements. So we did um, slow slide. How do I? All right, so we do have certificates of appreciation. We would, the Board of Selectmen would like, like to thank Joseph J. Mazzola for his 15 years of service to the town of Townsend. Um, we're awarding the certificate on Tuesday, October 4th, 2022, mm -hmm. and it needs to be signed by the selectmen. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Teresa, you're out of session, I guess, if you can come in to sign. Yeah, I can come in tomorrow, and I'd also like to uh, just add, a, a, uh, if people don't know, Joe had a, a bad reaction to COVID, uh, and he's not in the best of health right now, and I all, we, we all wish him get well and get to enjoy his retirement. We are. I, I would like to read his letter, because I think his letter says a lot. Uh, okay, so do you want me to pull up his resignation? Sure, I think that's, I think that would be... Um, I think I can get to it by just sometimes you can air through and sometimes you can. Um, all right, so is this on the screen? Yes. All right, go ahead. Um, to the towns of Ashby, Pepperell, and Townsend Board of Selectmen. I'm submitting my resignation effective September 30th, 2022, because of some minor health issues. I feel that my health is my first priority and spending more time with my family is my second. I have served my country for 23 years in the US Army, 21 years of service to North Middlesex School District, and 16 years of service as a veteran service officer. I serve my country, state and local government with dignity and honor. I have helped many veterans in the three towns to receive benefits from the state and federal government. I was very pleased with my results and I'm proud of this. I will still volunteer my services, but on limited basis to help veterans in need. I would also like to thank all of the individuals I worked with in Townsend, Ashby, and Pepperell. Respectfully, Joseph J. Mazzola, Veteran Service Officer. Thank you for letting me do that. You're welcome. So thank you to Joe. And we also have a card here, Teresa, for um, uh, Joe. So when you come in tomorrow, please sign that as well. All right, our next retirement is um, Lieutenant Mark Giancotti. Um, we have a certificate of appreciation for 27 years of service to the town of Townsend. Um, presenting this to Lieutenant Mark Giancotti by the Board of Selectmen on Tuesday, October 4th, 2022. Mm -hmm. And I believe his retirement date is October 12th or 14th. 14th. 
14. Yes. Um, so let me get the um, chief slider up here. Um, uh, right here, this is the letter from the chief. Do you want me to read that? Sure. Um, please accept this letter as confirmation, receipt, and acceptance of your resignation slash retirement submitted on September 25th and effective October 14th, 2022. Congratulations on your retirement and thank you for your dedication in making our mission, vision, and values a reality for the citizens we serve. I commend your individual and collective contributions to this department and the greater community and wish you success with your future endeavors. And this is signed, um, sincerely, uh, James P. Sartell, Chief of Police. So congratulations, Mark, on your retirement. Mark, and thank you for your service. Thank you. And we also have a card to sign for him as well here in town hall. And um, I spoke with the chief. And so um, there, there may be a future, um, just look for future announcements on Mark's retirement. Um, it's not effective until next week, Friday. Mm -hmm. So, uh, thank you. Um, we have other two other resignations to announce. Uh, one is Bonnie Fitz Fitzpatrick as the Assistant uh, Recreation Director, and also um, I believe it's. Um, Mike Crowley, we've already discussed that as land use coordinator, and he is effective the uh, seven. seven. We were hoping for the lady days. And then we also had a resignation from a committee. This is Mike Barrasco from the uh, Towns and Affordable Housing Trust. So as soon as the trust meets um, to host another opening there, there will be an opening there. Uh, for someone from the town specifically with a financial background. That was Mike's um, stay. Yeah. So thank you, Mike, for your time on the Affordable Housing Trust. So we have those announcements. Um, uh, the Haunted Trail. Um, I don't <laughs> think I have it here. Um, I, I do not have the haunted trail. No, I think it's in communications. It, it's not here. Um, but you can look at find that on news. The haunted trail is Saturday night. Do you know what time it starts? Yes. Um five or oh, I don't wanna I think it's five. No, no, it's I think it's seven to it's a couple hours. Go if you go on the town page, it's right there on the the link is right there. Oh, at the very top. Seven to nine. Seven to nine. Seven seven to nine. nine. Oh. I know it's two hours. hours. Six to nine. Six to nine. Oh, six to nine if you want the food truck or mm -hmm. the temporary airbrush tattoos or the balloon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't skip out on the balloon. Yeah. So six to nine for, for all three hours, you have that. And then from seven to nine, the Haunted Trail, Magic by Jay, Popcorn, and the Free Highway. So um, <laughs> that's at the Townsend Library. Um, and there is also Greg's Run, which, let me go back to you. You buried the lead, Veronica. It's at the Thompson <laughs> Library. What? Starring. No, it's not. Jazz Dexter no. Duraney no, as, as a character. As a as a guide, right? You're gonna be a guide to tour guide. Tour yes. guide. Tour yes. guide. Are you tour guide? <laughs> Nobody will know it's me. Guaranteed. <laughs> All right, and then there's also oh, it's not up here. Greg's run. On Greg's Saturday run is at uh, ten o'clock. It's just for people that don't know. It's Def definitely not a run uh, for people that don't run, uh, though it is a race for people. Um, there are different categories. And also at 1030, there's a kid, ra uh, child's race 
uh, as young as two years old. That's my favorite thing to watch. Um, that, uh, <laughs> that, is it a run? <laughs> it, it, that is a run. And they even yell out, running, running, running. <laughs> um, but uh, I know uh, I've done it with uh, two dogs and a, and a stroller and still haven't broken an hour. You know, it's just not, it's not, uh, so don't feel like it has to be a run. Uh, registration opens up at nine. Uh, I will be at registration, so come come by. And even if you don't want to run or whatever, it is one of the largest um, scholarship funds uh, for North Middlesex. So uh, it does a great job raising scholarship. So can I can I jump in too and say sure. that because you said North Middlesex, I just wanted to say that. They were to host last weekend a, um, a Nesba band competition that was canceled. Um, and for anybody who doesn't know, that is, um, that was, they, they uh, uh, wanted to be a host community so that they could raise funds and they had to pay a fee to be able to be a host committee and then they, they canceled it. Um, so there are, are fundraising for the band. Um, if anybody has ever seen the band perform, they're really, really good. Those kids work hard. Um, they, they've done a lot of fundraising and they, they're going to need a little extra help because of this cancellation. So if you see anything for North Middlesex Band, please uh, reach in your pocket and help them out. All right. Um, next announcement, there's a community meeting tomorrow night at 7 p.m. This is on the website. It's on the calendar as well as here. We've talked about that already today, so please attend. We would like everybody's input on that. And then the last announcement is for the Historic District Commission. Um, they have a public hearing on October 19th in the Selectman's Chambers um, regarding an application for a certificate of appropriateness submitted by Dason. LLC, Philip Calametta, the applicant is seeking approval of visual exterior work at the property located at 42020 uh, Main Street in Historic District 3. The application is available for review at the town clerk's office, um, and interested parties are encouraged to attend. Please enter through the front doors of town hall to attend the public hearing. So it is at, uh, in the Selectman's Chambers Town Hall, 4.30 p.m. on um, October 19th, 19th yes. which is a Wednesday, correct? Yes. All right. And I believe that's all the announcements we have. Um, our next meeting, so I can stop right there. Our next meeting is on Tuesday, October 18th. At 6 p.m., we've reviewed the fall meeting dates. Is there a motion to sign payroll and bills payable warrants um, in or out of session? I uh, guess. That's out of session. Yeah. Well, there's two of us. So we can, can, yeah, we, we can do it out of session. Out of session. And then adjourn. I'll make a motion that we review and sign payroll and bill warrants out of session. Second. I'll, um, how do you vote, Teresa? Teresa A. Morris, yes. Essex and Iranian, yes. And Veronica Tell, yes. We do not have an executive session tonight. Hallelujah. Is there a motion to adjourn? I will make a motion to adjourn that <laughs> make a motion that we adjourn at 8.01. I second that. Teresa, how do you vote? Teresa A. Morris, yes. Iranian, yes. And Veronica Tell, yes. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. And good night. Good night.